all, I hope you have all had a great week. Um, it's rained in the UK this week, is everyone excited? I hope everyone has been enjoying the slightly cooler nights, I've been sleeping so much better. I'm feeling just like, I've never been so happy to see rain. <laughs> I'm sure if this continues it will get tiresome after like a week, but it's just nice, it's cool, I'm not completely melting for once, which is great, which is a good thing because I think this week's video could be rather long. Um, I've just written notes for it and it's taken up a whole page in the bullet journal, so... <laughs> Make yourself comfortable, grab yourself a drink or something, because I thought I would do, this is actually a request from one of you guys, you left it as a comment under one of my videos, it got thumbs up, it got replies to say yes, you want to see it too, and people have asked for a recap of my previous capsule wardrobe haul videos, um, and I wasn't too sure how far to go back, but I thought maybe if I do a review of the last 12 months that makes sense, it's probably things that you, if you've watched my previous videos, might remember, might wonder what my thoughts on them now are and as I was going through there's a couple of things that have become very apparent to me um, this is very interesting I think even if you're not documenting this type of thing for YouTube it's actually quite an interesting thing to document and look back on and I can very easily see clear behaviors here things I'm good at things that I'm bad at bad purchases that I make and very good purchases that I make so I'll do a little kind of conclusion at the end um, but let's get started with summer Summer 2017, and um, my capsule wardrobe haul video for that season went live on the 18th of June 2017. So we're like putting it back longer than 12 months here. And I've just gone back and I've basically written down every single product that I bought that was mentioned in the video. Thank God for description boxes. And then I've done just a little, like a little tick if it's been good, a little cross if it was a bad purchase, and then a question mark if it's something that I'm like, nah, over. This is not everything that I have bought and purchased over the last 12 months. In fact, looking at the number of things that are here, I wish it was. I'd be a complete liar to be like, I don't buy anything out of capture wardrobe, like haul period. I wish that was the case, um, but it's not. I still make impulse purchases. I still buy things as I see them throughout the month. I still buy things every now and again when I've got a big occasion coming up or a holiday. I do enjoy buying clothes. Um, however, but I do thoroughly also enjoy doing this capsule wardrobe thing and I feel like it definitely through the almost four years that I've done this now three years maybe it's three it's definitely made me reduce the amount of things that I buy and also just think about them a bit more and I feel like I'm so much happier with my wardrobe because of that process because I'm just thinking about it more I enjoy what I buy I enjoy what I'm wearing so yeah I'm not perfect I like to buy things so the first thing that I mentioned in that video was the Urban Outfitters Axel jeans and um, which aside from the girlfriend Helena jeans which I was very kindly sent those were the ones that really got me into straight leg jeans I was like oh I kind of like this vibe before that I was a straight up skinny jean wearer which is crazy because when you look at this this is only like a year ago now I just don't really wear skinny jeans straight leg jeans every single day however I did buy them in the incorrect size I still have them but they're slightly too big for me they do slightly stretch a little bit because they have got a bit of give a bit of elastic in the material which I think is a nice thing it means that they're comfortable to wear I still really like them they're not the correct size for me currently and I now have another style from the high street that I prefer to wear so still something that I would recommend still something that I wear but now I've got some others then I have two things that I have unfortunately passed on and got rid of the selected femme Marley espadrilles oh my word I love these espadrilles I, I just absolutely love them however they are suede they are beige I am someone who is very heavy on my feet and so things like a delicate espadrille just do not last on me if you know of any hard wearing, I feel like I might need to go for a leather one um, over a suede one, maybe that's where I go wrong. They were dirty, they were completely ruined um, by the end of sort of like September, October time. So unfortunately they went in the bin, which isn't a fun thing to say. I don't ever like to advocate throwing things away, but sometimes things just are unfixable. They were pretty minging. Espadrilles for me are definitely more of a one season thing, which is why I didn't buy any espadrilles this year. I don't currently have any espadrilles in my wardrobe. And although I love them as someone who does have big, boof, 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 like stompy feet, they just don't last me. So. I've definitely gone to sliders this year and I feel like they have lasted a little bit better. And the other thing was a Whistles double zip crossbody bag that was in red. Again, I really liked this. A friend came around and fell 
in love with it and I am such a sucker when I see that someone just really loves something and I, I liked it, I was getting use out of it but I knew that my friend was going to get way more use out of it than I ever was I passed it on um, and I don't regret it actually, I thought it was a lovely bag um, but I've just got other ones like the Celine black one that I wear more often so Sad to say goodbye, but I feel like it's gone to a good home. One that I've put a question mark by, I still own, but I haven't worn it this summer, which for me is a bit of a like, oh, probably not the best purchase. I want to be able to wear things season and season and season again. And it was a Topshop striped linen paper bag skirt. Um, quite a few of my mates also bought the skirt off the back of me recommending it. And we all agreed that it, because it is that linen mix, you sort of sit down and then it bunches up and then it's just hard to make look presentable. Not that linen should be completely crease free, linen creases, that's fine, we all know it. It looks great. However, this creased big time and really did look like you're wearing a paper bag. So I kept it for this summer, but I haven't worn it. And I think that's because I'm just not a great skirt lover. Um, I wish I was, but I definitely love jeans, shorts, play suits, jumpsuits over a skirt or a dress. So I still got it. I could see at the end of the season me putting this in a charity bag, which happens sometimes and in the future make a note to perhaps not go for a linen skirt and perhaps just lay off the skirts in general. Then we have some absolutely cracking purchases. They were all from And Other Stories. It was a smudge camisole. Again, something I still own and something that I wear when I go away. Really good for holidays, really good for when it is like absolutely hot and you just don't want to wear anything else. Um, in fact, all the camisoles I feel I've ever bought, I've kept and I really enjoy wearing. I love a good camisole in the summer. The other thing is a cream crew neck t-shirt. Yes, this is like a basic that I go back to. Oh, it's up there at the moment. I'm surprised it's up there. I thought it would be in the wash. I wear this so often. I love the cut of this. Um, I've got a weekday t-shirt that does a similar thing. It doesn't come down over the arm. It sort of shoots out. And as someone who feels quite conscious about this like top area of, of my arms, it's where I carry a bit of weight. It's just so flattering to have that kind of straight out because it just skims over that area. So I'd really recommend looking for t-shirts that have that crew cut neck and those sleeves because it's just very very flattering and the other thing is my and other stories red shirt i have still got this people have asked about the red and other stories things They're like anna you bought loads of red last year where the hell is it i still have it it's not hanging up in my wardrobe and really it should be because if it's not there i ain't wearing it it's under my bed and i feel like i haven't gone for this as much as I really, really wanted to because it isn't a natural fabric. And in the summer, I have to wear natural fabrics or else I absolutely stink the place out. I'm very sweaty. And so for me, sort of like having a silk there, if there is anything at all under my armpit, is optimal. And that's definitely not silk. I can't remember off the top of my head what fabric it is. Oh, it is 72% silk, but then it also has viscose in it, 28%. And I feel like that 28% really does make a difference and I get very hot and sweaty in this and as you guys know we've had a very hot summer so I definitely haven't got as much wear out of that as I should but you know what it's here I'm going to stick it in my wardrobe now and maybe for me this is more of an autumn thing rather than a summer thing because it has just been too hot. One thing that I found this summer and I was like you know what these just didn't work out for me were a pair of red and other stories mules um, and they just didn't work out for me one because they were quite uncomfortable I actually find and other stories shoes to be rather uncomfortable if I'm honest. Um, I've bought a couple of sliders and bits and bobs from them and actually sent them back because even just walking around the flat was painful. So these weren't very comfortable for me and they just didn't fit right. They sort of showed a weird amount on my feet. Like I just wasn't really feeling them. I wore them very infrequently. So thankfully they were able to go in a charity shop bag in pretty good nick and pretty good condition, but definitely not my best purchase. So when I look back at my summer haul from last year, four out of eight of the items are still absolutely cracking, absolutely love. And then there's four that I've either got rid of or I'm a bit like on the fence about. So I wouldn't say that is a great, that's 50%. That's not a great level to be at. I definitely strive to be higher than that. Um, but I reckon when you see the patterns in the rest of the hauls, we will talk about it at the end. 
you'll see where I'm coming from. I definitely know where I need to improve. And actually, it wasn't mentioned in the haul, but I've had so many of you ask about it. It was a red um, skirt from Under the Stories with like a slit up the front of the leg that I absolutely love. And I just don't fit in it anymore, which is really sad. And I got rid of it, I put it in a charity bag. I don't fit in this anymore, it's just depressing. But actually, I really wish I'd kept it, just eaten a couple of less takeaway pizzas, because it would have been so handy to have this summer. Occasionally we get gives away regret, that is definitely something I regret giving away. It just, oh my word, it would have been so good, so. <sighs> now I get on to my autumn haul from last year, which was put up on the 24th of September. That was just after my birthday, 2017. There were seven items in total, and I'm gonna do a spoiler now. Only one of them was a fail. This is my strong point. Autumn and winter, I am there. I was so, so, so happy with everything that I bought. Um, the Whistles Camel Coat, do I need to say any more? I just think that coat is absolute perfection. Probably my favourite coat that I own and it will be a coat that I own for years and years and years and years to come. Um, the Dear Francis boots, I do need to put a bit of a just like disclaimer on these. These are not that comfortable. These are not the boots for you. This is when I realised they were uncomfortable. I walked to the station, got on a train, went up to London, walked to the tube, got on the tube, walked around London, got back on the tube, came back home, walked home. I was like, oh my word, my feet are in agony right now. These are not like a long hard day boot. These are for me like a casual going for dinner boot and they're just a little bit too high for me to wear for like a whole day but they are a glorious glorious shoe. Still happy I have them. The Cezanne Orson jumper like the white jumper. Oh again it's something that I wore so so much. The Demi Lee New England jumper. Again I got this in New York. I had like a New York moment where I bought two chunky knit jumpers and really struggled to fit them in my suitcase on the way home. Um, that again is just such a lovely jumper that I just love whenever I wear it and it has this really interesting bell sleeve that just makes it really different, both washed really well, both kept really well, very happy with those. And then here is where I discovered the Topshop Raw Hem Straight Leg Jeans. This was when I found them. I now have multiple pairs in my wardrobe and they're basically the only denim that I now own and really wear basically every single day. Um, yeah, I just absolutely love them. Do I, I don't even need to tell you for the millionth time. I'm very happy that I found them. And actually the thing that didn't work out from this haul were my Topshop boutique straight leg jeans that were white, um, which I absolutely love, but I sat on some like blood red ants in Italy in them and tried to get like dead crushed red ants out of white denim. It just does not happen. So unfortunately, these were ruined through that, but I love them and I've replaced my white jeans with this pair from MIH um, and I just think it's really cool to have a pair of white jeans in your wardrobe if you are an avid jean wearer like myself. The final thing I picked up in that haul was from Under the Stories and it was just like a basic slightly sheer um, turtleneck jumper. I wore it so much. It was a wool fabric, so again, like very natural, not too bad for the sweating. And I just, I wore that, yeah, I wore it to death. I put it in storage a couple of months ago and already I'm looking forward to getting it back out. So six out of seven, and the only thing that didn't work out was my own fault for sitting on something. <laughs> so autumn for me, very good month. Now my winter haul went up on the 26th of November, 2017, and only included five things. And I think it was so small because I was going to New Zealand, like, early December and I just wasn't in like the mindset for buying winter clothing. I was like, I'm about to go to the summer bitches, <laughs> see ya. So I bought a couple of things but they were very much sort of basics. There wasn't really anything too trendy here. There were things that I was lacking in my wardrobe and I really knew that I needed. Um, the Cezanne Boy shirt, which is just a black silk shirt. I can highly, highly, highly recommend these shirts. They're very similar to the equipment ones and they don't have that washed like brushed um, look to them. They're just a very flat silk, um, but it fits absolutely beautifully. Can really recommend they wash up really well as well. So that worked out really well. One thing that I've been a bit like mm, about, I still own, but I can see myself getting rid of if I'm honest in the future, are the and of the stories blue jeans that I bought here. They just go a bit baggy around the knees. They're a little bit too stretchy for me. They were somewhere in between a straight leg and a skinny leg, and I would rather it be one or the other. I'm not sure about the kind of 
in between vibes that these had going on. I haven't worn them for a couple of months. Um, I know some people really love and other stories denim, so I feel like I just got the wrong fit. I don't think it's a reflection of their denim as a range, um, but for me, yeah, something about the colour as well, it's a little bit too blue. Um, these just didn't really work out for me. Another thing that didn't work out, I bought a pair of mango leather trousers that I loved. So happy with them. Um, sat down one day and it wasn't my ass that split them, it was my knee. I was so gutted. And actually, it's because it was like a weak seam on sort of the knee pad um, section. And Mango were very kind and refunded me my money, um, but they couldn't do an exchange because they were sold out. They were absolutely sold out. I was so, so gutted because they were perfect and um, so instead I replaced them with a pair from and other stories which are pretty much the same but don't have that seam across the knee um, I could kind of see this this happening in slow motion and the minute that I got these mango leather trousers I could kind of see that when I bent my knees there was this like stretch on this panel that was just probably like 10 centimeters above my knee um, and it's just really good that these and other stories ones don't have that because hopefully I won't have the same problem um, so replace them it's all cool thank you mango for being really cool. Two final things, um, a Topshop leather skirt. I wouldn't say I got a ton of wear out of this, but I do like having that option in my wardrobe because if I am going to wear a skirt in the winter months, it's going to be leather or else I'm really not very interested. The final thing from that haul was a And Other Stories black, like really thick roll neck jumper, which I just loved. The issue with knitwear for me is if it's more of like a high street knit. I will tend to just incorporate it as part of my loungewear and it becomes very like loungewear slash pajama for me and this definitely fell into that category. Whereas things like the Cezanne, the Demi Lee, like um, I've got an acne one like that, I would, you know, I wouldn't wear that. Just for my DPD driver, like nah, that's like special occasion. But when something is a bit more from like Topshop or ASOS or in this case, under the stories, it just becomes very like, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna, wear my pyjamas and then wear this over the top. It was very warm. It was great when it was absolutely freezing in the UK. I got a lot of wear out of it. I just need to change my mindset there. That's something on me and just leave it for like special occasions. And you know, I've got my dressing gown for keeping warm. Then finally, my spring haul, which I'm just gonna go over very quickly because it was very recent and you know, things change. Your feelings on clothing changes as time passes. So, cause this is all quite new for me. I'm still like, oh my God, yes, I love it. Whereas in a year, Years time I might feel differently so I've given myself a 9 out of 9 I feel like everything that I purchased here was a good purchase I'll quickly run through it um, the Topshop awesome jeans um, are a different style of jean that I was introduced to because of some sponsored work that I've been doing with Topshop but actually I really really like them and they've been really handy in the summer because they're slightly thinner than the um, the raw hem jeans that I really like so they feel a bit more summer appropriate. I don't get as sweaty and hot in them. I've only got one wash in them actually. I'd be interested to get a black pair. I think a black pair would look really, really nice. And the second thing were made well white overalls. Again, something that I've worn throughout the summer. And I actually really enjoyed wearing these, um, just like wearing them like you would wear overalls with a chunky knit over the top. They just actually look like a really cool cut pair of jeans. And whenever I did that, people were like, oh my God, what jeans are you wearing? I was like, it's not jeans, it's my overalls. So I feel like they were a really good multitasking piece to have in my wardrobe. My Topshop yellow coat, oh, I just love coats and I feel like I really think about coat purchases so I never really regret them. Um, the Topshop yellow coat, yeah, what can I say? An absolutely cracking coat. Good for sort of spring actually because it has slightly shorter sleeves, it's slightly cropped in the fit of the sort of upper part of it, um, which is actually really nice for when you don't need something that's so like bundling, gonna keep you warm. Um, yeah, I got a lot of use out of that. I just would wear that all the time for like, running around doing errands. And I remember wearing it one time and my mum was like, oh my God, you're wearing yellow, are you feeling okay? My end of the story is green jumper. I mean, I was just getting the color like left, right and center in this haul. Um, again, like the other end of the story is like black, thick roll neck jumper that I was talking about. This did fall slightly into lounge berry category for me, um, but it was really comfortable, a really gorgeous jumper. Um, I really like And Other Stories knitwear actually. It definitely delivers on that front. Then two shirts from And Other Stories. This polka dot shirt, still loving it, still like it. And the other one was a leopard print shirt. That This one just has a really like, art teacher vibe it's very like baggy it's just very like roomy and um, but it's actually been really really handy over the summer when you've just been so hot you don't want anything to touch you or if you're burnt and you don't want to get 
anything here out. It sort of covers you up but in a way that you feel like you're a bit nude. I really went for this haul because I still have three things to mention and it's the biggest haul out of any that I did. I feel like my autumn and winter hauls tend to be a bit more edited. Whereas for spring and summer I always go like a little overboard and I think I went a little overboard here because I'd just come back from New Zealand and my winter haul was so small so I kind of, you know, it balances out. Um, my Kitchery jumpsuit, the pinstripe jumpsuit, still absolutely love that. I get a lot of wear out of that on London days where I just want something that's very easy, I don't really need to think about it, I can wear Vans with it which are just, if I'm going to London I want to be wearing Vans because they're the most comfortable thing. <laughs> but I still feel put together, like a little bit formal, like not too casual, um, so yeah, definitely love that. Also, their newsletters make me want to buy absolutely everything. The other jumpsuit is the Windsor London Utility, like, boiler jumpsuit. Oh man, I absolutely love that. And now, when I look online, there are so many of these boiler jumpsuits. They're absolutely everywhere. I feel like I was definitely, like, looking at the wrong time and how I looked, like, a month later there would have been absolutely loads. Definitely a category that I would expand in. I feel like the fit is just flattering, easy, comfortable. Um, I wore them with heels to like an evening event and people were like, oh, you look great. And I felt great, but I also felt so comfortable and that is just really, really important for me. But then also I can wear it at the weekend with like sliders or trainers or boots and it's just, yeah, I love jumpsuits. And then my Sam Edelman, um, you know, the Chandler slippers. Yeah, I just adore these. I've got so much wear out of them. I've completely like, yeah, that's a good look, isn't it? Um, but yeah, these are so, so, so comfortable. Um, they take maybe like three occasions of wearing in and then any bits that were rubbing have completely gone and for me they are like wearing slippers. Um, and it's just been a very good spring, summer purchase. Would 100% recommend those. So I think we have some interesting findings here. Um, for me, autumn and winter dressing is just my comfort zone. I actually had smaller hauls for both of those seasons, but ended up with the better success rate. And so I think that's because over the years, I developed a real like core set of basics. And for me being more comfortable in that type of clothing, I feel like that is something that I've nailed pretty well and so when it comes to autumn and winter I'm really just adding things that I know that I'm really going to like, I know where the gaps are and also in autumn and winter I tend to buy more higher end things and I don't necessarily think that higher end things equal better quality but I do have to think about that purchase more. I mean if you're buying a £150 sweatshirt compared to a £50 sweatshirt there's a big difference but it's not just about that price tag and I think it's something within me, I need to apply the same thought processes that I would for buying the more expensive things also to the slightly more high street and the slightly more budget side of things. So that's something within me that I've obviously, I've got that like thinking there, but I'm just not applying it across all clothing purchases that I make. I'm just applying it to the really, really fancy ones and applying like 50% of that thought process to the slightly cheaper things. So I think I need to make it more of an even level playing field. It doesn't mean that I need to buy more fancy things, that's not what I'm saying here. I think it's just about applying that thought process across everything. The other huge finding, which is like sticking out like a sore thumb that we all knew would be there, is that I'm just not great when it comes to summer dressing. I do feel like I've slightly like found my vibe and sort of found my way a little bit better this year, but it's something that I still am consistently having to work on. Autumn for me is just like, yes, winter, yes, that spring, yeah, I'm cool. Summer, I just don't know what to do with myself. Hot weather dressing is not my natural comfort zone. And I feel like I've got a better core basic capture wardrobe with my winter and autumn stuff. So with summer, I sort of do a slightly bigger haul, but it's a bit more higgledy-biggledy. It's a bit more all over the place and I'm not really sure where the direction is going with it. I feel like this summer I've made better purchases and I'm getting better with it. It's just my weak spot that I need to work at and next year I just really, really, really need to look. Probably actually do this, like look back at previous summer hauls and be like, no Anna, skirts are not your thing, tea dresses are not your thing, frilly wrap tops are not your thing. Like I just need to work out that there are certain things that aren't for me that haven't worked out in the past. I probably need to learn from that and maybe apply that more in the future. So this has been a very, very helpful thing to do. Like I said, I really recommend doing this even if you're not making a YouTube video out of it. I mean, this is a very long YouTube video. Thank you so much if you've managed to make it this far. I'm actually vlogging this week and so next week's video is gonna be like a at home week, 50%, with 50% Ibiza week. And I've 
vlogged me going to London, I have vlogged various bits and bobs, it hasn't just been at home stuff, so I really hope you enjoy that, look out for that. It's like old school weekly vlog from like four years ago, remember when I used to do those? Hopefully it will have the same kind of vibe, um, but with an Ibiza trip thrown in, um, we're very excited, I'm going to pack today, I cannot wait. But anyway, I hope you've had a great week, thank you so much for watching, I will try and link down below whatever I can, dupes if they're still available, and uh, yeah, I'll see you next week for that vlog, bye!